thank you, first of all, for inviting me today. Um, going back, back to what they've said, that they're trying to sort of link football and tech and how that sort of correlation works. And to be fair, I didn't really figure out for myself until last night when I was putting the presentation together. <laughs> Um, it wasn't that I didn't know the link, but it was just kind of how do I put that story together for you now and to give you a bit more of an understanding of how I got to that stage. So that's kind of what I'm going to do now is tell you about my story of how tech and football have come together for me and how it's created role models for me to be who I want to be now um, growing up when there were basically no role models for me, to be honest, back in the 80s. Um, I am quite, I'm 40 in May, so I'm a little bit older. Um, so back in the 80s, there were no role models. So um like you said, yeah, so my name's Lewis. Um, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I'm a tech and diversity recruiter for Booking.com. Um, so I recruit for back-end Java developers, um, but mainly focus on diverse talent and, and trying to source those into the business. Um, I'm also chair of Be Proud UK, which is Booking.com's um, LGBTQ ERG, which is an employee resource group. Um, so I started that chapter uh, I, in August. We started off in the UK. Uh, we've got about 180 members so far. Globally, we've got about 2,000 uh, within the ERG. Um, and I also, I am co-founder of Iska Apollo FSC, which is Expert's only LGBTQ football team that we have here as well. So that's a little bit, I will go into a bit more detail about my career shortly as well. Um, so what I want to cover today um, is my story, obviously where I've come from, my background, um, a little bit about the facts, really, of actually what is out there at the moment for LGBTQ people, where it comes to sports and also tech, um, the change, what we need to do to make those changes, the results we're going to get if we make those changes as well, and what the future can look like for us as a community. So my story, um, growing up different, I always felt like I wasn't like my mates all the time. I know that I, I knew that I fancied different people. Um, I didn't really know what it was. I knew that I didn't fancy my friend's sister or anything like that. I just knew that there was something different to me. So there wasn't really any role models. Um, the only people I had, you can see the silhouettes, Freddie Mercury and Justin Fashion You. That was the only two people really that I knew identified as LGBTQ. And their story isn't a happy ending. So it probably wasn't the best role model for me to have. However, Queen is still a massive role model for me now anyway, because his music's fantastic, no matter what anyone says. Um, and my dad was off with him as well. So that's why Queen's always going to be there. Um, but yeah, it was difficult to understand really who I was, what I was, um, and not thinking that I was different, but knowing that I kind of was. So I took a different route with my career. Um, I kind of ran, didn't run away as in packed home and didn't tell my mum where I was going. I ran away as in I went overseas to live abroad because I felt for me, I need to live in a different country where nobody knows me. And I can just go there and be myself for as many years as possible. Originally, I went out there for six months. It ended up being seven years, um, but I did live all over. So I lived in Ibiza. I lived in Italy. I lived in Andorra. Um, I lived in Turkey. I lived in Lanzarote, Fort Aventura. I think that's it. Yeah, that's all of them. Yeah. So I was a holiday rep. So that's what I went out to be. Um, and travel is, the, for me, it is one of the most inclusive industries you can become part of. Um, everyone can be themselves. Uh, and it was the best step that I took. Um, during my time as a holiday rep, I found more about who I was. Um, there were a lot more people who I was working with that were openly out and they were gay. Um, somebody caught my eye and it kind of helped me discover who I was and who I wanted to be. Uh, and then shortly after, I think my first year of working overseas, I finally had the courage to come out to mum and dad and tell them that I was gay. During that time, working in travel was amazing. Um, I had to grow up eventually because working as a holiday rep, you kind of don't grow up. You know, everyone else does. You come home and everyone's they've got children, they've moved on, they've got careers. I kind of was still like a little kid and I didn't really know where I was to go next. Um, so I moved to Manchester because on TV when I grew up was Curious Folk and that was, I mean, don't mean anything bad with this, but it was the gayest place I knew in the UK. So <laughs> that's why I chose it. Um, so I went to Manchester and thought, you know what, that's where I can be gay um, and enjoy the community as much as I can. And I loved it. Like I, it was amazing. Manchester always got a special place in my heart. Uh, I love the city. So inclusive. So much going on there. Um, plus, is where I heard the first time about one of the main role models I have in my life, which is Alan Turin. Um, because there's a lot of that's where he's from. There's a lot of history behind him there as well. It was the first time really I started learning about role models that I wish they taught me about at school. That I wished I was taught about then, because then I thought, you know what? 
I wish I did computer science now as a degree. I wish I went into that career, but I chose not to. Growing up at school as well, football was my other passion. But again, there were no openly gay people um, that played football. Um, so it wasn't the route for me. But Manchester has the best football team in the world, Man United, no argument. So another reason why I went to Manchester as well was because of Man United. Um, so I was in Manchester um, and I, I worked for a travel company again, um, which was called Co-op Travel back then. Um, loved it again, but just doing sales and stuff like that. Um, I then um, came back down to the West Country, down to Bristol, and did the job that I never wanted to do, because in my eyes, if you did that job, you were gay. And when I was growing up, I didn't want that in my head. And it was cabin crew. And to this day, I absolutely loved that job. It was the best job I'd ever done. All right. It was brilliant. I got to travel. Yes, it was serving tea and coffee, but it was so much more than that as well. And again, it opened up a lot more doors for me. It helped me become more about who I was and find myself a little bit more as well because I got to go to all these amazing countries and we get week stops when we used to do long haul so it was a good good holiday experience as well for me um so I did, I did that for a little bit and then it was kind of like right what what am I going to do now so I, I did go to London um where I thought there's more options for me there in regards to men basically um I didn't feel like I was going to find anybody in the west country <laughs> All right. Let me like, but yeah. So I, I thought I'd go to London. There'd be more people for me there. Um, I'll meet more people. It's more open. But London for me was the most loneliest city I've ever been in. It's beautiful. It's massive. But you can get down some dark paths, which I took. And I took the wrong paths living in London. Um, so I was there for a couple of years. Then I came back to the West Country um, from Bridgewater, where I'm from. Um, but then I came to Exeter. Um, I started to work for a recruitment company in Exeter, quite a well-known one. Um, and it was the first time, Not I didn't experience homophobia, but I experienced that it was, they were a bit, they, it was a few weeks into my like work in there and um, someone asked me about a partner. I said, yeah, they're called. And I gave him a man's name and nothing was said. And then a few days later, my boss came up to me and said, oh, you never told me you were gay in your interview. And I was a bit like, I don't really know why I needed to have told you I was gay in my interview. And it got me thinking, they're like, do I need to? Because I've not been living or working in this sort of world in the UK. I've been like jotting about all here and everywhere. Like, is that how I need to be? So I stayed there for a little bit. Um, I remember them all going to watch Exeter City play, um, all, the, all the lads, as they called themselves. Um, and they didn't invite me um, because they turned around to one of the girls and said, well, he's gay. Why would he like football? That really annoyed me. Um, so I started a gay football team to throw it back in their face. So that's basically where the gay football team came from. Um, that's kind of what I do in life, actually. If someone annoys me, I throw it back in their face and I'll do something to shove it back in it. Um, so I didn't stay in that company for too long. Um, there was, it was the only time really I had some homophobic abuse thrown at me with people that worked there on nights out and stuff. So, so I left um, and then went into a tech company and did tech recruitment for a little bit. Um, and I loved it then. It was really, really nice, um, except for somebody in the business told me one day that I need to be less rainbow when I go and visit clients. And I was like, what do you mean by that? What, what, what's that mean? He went, well, just tone it down a little bit. Don't be obviously gay. And I was like, OK, I, I'm not sure how obvious I am. Like, I don't have a big rainbow in my head. I don't really know what that's supposed to be. So I started wearing rainbows every day to work um, again, just to throw it in there. And I started to focus on going out to companies that are focusing on diverse tech or they're trying to help our community um, even more. So that's what I did. Um, they didn't like that. Um, so I didn't stay too long. Um, then COVID came um, and then I started working for Booking.com, which is where I am now. So I will go into book.com in a minute, but I just want to go back to football. So where we are at the moment then with, with the facts with football, there are, I think it's 5,000, yeah, well, I think it is, it's right in front of me, 5,368 in, number of English professional footballers currently in the EFL, um, which is the English Football League. That's how many there are. The number of players who are out, does anybody know how many players are out? Yes. Yep. One. Jake Daniels. I thought it was Jack Daniels and I went straight on to TikTok as soon as he came out and I did a whole TikTok on it, loads of views, and I went, his name's Jake, not Jack. Um, 
but and it, TikTok got there anyway. Um, so yeah, so he came out, and it for me that was probably one of the most emotional days that I've had um, because I have grew up loving football, and football was my passion, and I never felt it was a route for me. Um, not saying I would have been a great footballer, but you never know. And I'm going to keep telling myself that I would have been the best footballer in the world. Um, but him coming out has opened so many doors um, to the community, um, to us itself. Like um, he did it mainly because of Tom Daly. Um, they recently did a video that if you haven't watched it yet, I think it's on YouTube, but definitely have a, get a chance to watch it. They actually meet up and go for a coffee and talk about how Jake come out and how Tom helped him come out. Um, so I think for Jake, Tom was his role model and he had that person there. And today, literally two hours ago, um, somebody else came out that plays football. I'm just going to get his name up now. Um, Jacob Janko, who is a Czech Republic international midfielder. He came out as gay today. Um, so again, that was literally two hours ago. So I didn't plan this. It was all just done. Um, but again, and he's put in there as well that he's seen what's happened in the UK now with Jake and he's seen that people aren't being, they're not going against him. He's not getting the prejudice as much as what he thought. Yes, he's getting some bad stuff still. There's still things happening, but he's getting the support that he thoroughly deserves. Um, and I think, again, it just proves the need for having these role models because it's going to open up so many doors within the football community. Um, it's going to give people that option when they are growing up. Thinking, you know what? I want to play football. I can play football and I can choose that as my main sport or whatever I want to do when I grow up. Before Jake, um, the highest profile out player was Liam Davis. Um, he played for Torquay United, um, but he was also the first gay player to play at Wembley uh, a few years ago as well. So he does still play football now. Um, and he did send, when we set up the gay football team in Exeter, he reached out to us um, to offer any support that we might have needed as well to set it up. So it's good to have someone locally that's supporting us throughout. In the tech industry then, so around about just under a million, so 940,000 people roughly work in the current tech industry in the UK. 1.5 million people identify as LGBTQ over the age of 16. That was in the census 2021. Um, and UK companies are increasing hiring for this year for entry-level tech roles from 6596 last year to 15,000 this year. So they're going to be doubling it. We're tripling it at booking.com at the moment. So there's even more going in for us as well. But it scares me a little bit that there's going to be a massive skills gap. And it's mainly because we don't have the role models at the moment in tech for people to take this as their career journey. In fact, a third of LGBTQ people avoid careers within science, technology, or engineering. So that's nearly half a million, like 500,000. And the biggest chunk of that is for tech because they don't see tech as the angle or the area that they can go into for work. So the change, what I had to do was become my own role model. And by becoming my own, my own role model, it attracted role models to me that I would then look up to and be able to work towards what I wanted to do. So what you need to do, I'm not, I don't want to tell people to suck eggs with this at all, because you probably know what you need to do to become a role model, but you need to have a passion. You need to have the ability to inspire people as well. You need to set out your own clear goals. I, I do that on a regular basis. I'm always setting new goals for me anyway, and clear values. Um, and don't be ashamed of failure. Um, I think that's one thing that I get. I got taught more than anything in the last sort of few years. Get things wrong, own it, get over it, move, and then get it right again. And it is one of the best things you can learn and teach yourself when you want to become a role model. And it might be that you've got children and you want to become a role model to them and you're struggling about how you can become a role model to them. But these are some of the ways. Um, overcome obstacles as much as you can and be persistent. Me overcoming obstacles is to... Don't like football, right? I'll make a football team. That's how I overcome that obstacle. Um, don't wear, don't be rainbow, wear more rainbow. That's me coming over my obstacles and being more persistent. Um, commit to a community. So when I moved to Exeter, um, I'll be honest, I felt it was a little bit behind the time for some of the ways that they were. Um, and obviously living in Manchester and London and Bristol and all these places outside, um, they feel like there's a lot more going on. So while I was here, I was like, what best way can I get involved with the community? So I volunteered to be a trustee for Exeter Pride. Um, so I was their communications trustee for one year. Um, and it gave me an opportunity to go into local businesses in Exeter and teach them about diversity and inclusion. 
which is a word they are petrified to even mention because they're scared they're going to offend someone. They're going to get it wrong. So it was about me being able to go in there and educate them about how you can be more inclusive, using more inclusive languages. This small little steps they can take, A, it's going to attract more people to the business, but most importantly, it's going to let the people working for you be a lot more happier and they can be themselves and hopefully that be who they want to be throughout their whole career with you. So I did um, also do a um, article with a local business magazine, which I'll talk about in a bit uh, as well in a bit more detail. But what I did find when I reached out to a lot of the local businesses here in Exeter, it was quite a challenge to get any of them to respond and actually want to take part in a diversity and inclusion um, article. And in the end, I had to go to all London-based companies to do it instead. But it proved that we needed to bring it into Exeter and start that conversation happening. So, as I said, to become my own role model, um, I set up Exeter's first LGBTQ football team. We've been going now for about three years. Um, we aren't the best, but we have a laugh and we enjoy it. And we've got people from all different backgrounds, all ages and abilities. So a little plug, if you want to play football and you don't know what team to join, we are always taking players. Um, I work with local um, Exeter businesses and did the DNI initiative and did some reports and also a article with them as well. Um, it was with Grow Magazine. I think that's still around. It's like part of Exeter living right now. So that's who I did it with. Um, and it was only actually one, I think it was a fintech company that helped me do part of the article that was from here. All the other businesses, I won't name them, but they all declined to get involved with it or make any sort of comments. Um, I left companies that had different values to me um, and the wrong values, uh, which being more rainbow wasn't where I wanted to be. Um, and then I set up the UK chapter of Booking.com's LGBTQ ERG. The reason I did that is when I joined Booking.com, um, which to me is one of the most inclusive companies I've ever worked for, um, it, whatever they do, it's in their DNA, it's part of who we are. Um, we, everything was, our head office is over in the Netherlands, lovely place, lovely office, but everything they did was over there. Everything was focused around them. So me being me, tap, knocked on people's doors saying, why can't we have things? Why aren't we doing pride? Why aren't we getting involved with the community? So they said, run it yourself and set it all up. So I was like, okay, I've been here for six months, fine, I'll do it all. So we did, and we set it up, and we've now, so I say, got about 180 in it now, um, and we did our first major pride last year, and we're doing even more this year as well. So the result, um, more role models um, will hopefully lead to having more openly LGBTQ people, sports stars, and tech professionals as well. Um, it will open up career paths. It will meet, make sure that more people will take sport as their career. People are happier and they are, is a more productive team. I think it's near enough. It says there, actually. Um, if an LGBTQ person is out, of, is out at work, they are 60% more likely to be satisfied, satisfied with their sense of achievement. And they work up to 33% better as well if they are themselves and they're open at work. But again, being open at work, you need to have those role models there. Um, since setting up the ERG uh, with Booking.com, um, two people have come out to me and they've now come out to the rest of the business as well. So to me, that's all I needed to do. Uh, any event I put on with them, if it affects or helps one person, that's that's enough. That's enough. Um, and also as well, I think having more open, inclusive workspaces, having more role models, Bottom line, it increases the company's brand, images, and sales, and that's what most of the tech, tech companies and companies are looking for as well. So that's another reason why I think we do need these role models. The results for me, so this is um, our LGBTQ football team. Um, we had our first match a few years ago against Bristol Panthers, which is an LGBTQ football team local to us. Uh, it was our first match. Um, we didn't win, but that's not a point. doesn't matter. Um, we do, obviously, all the local prides as well. Um, we're part of um, the GFSN, which is the Gays Football Supporters Network. Um, now, that itself, um, it's got 45 different clubs across the UK. Um, we have tournaments all over the world, so we're down all over the world, sorry, all over the UK. Um, that one down there is outside Vauxhall Tube Station, where they had the London tournament in the summer last year. Um, so we travel around quite a bit. There's not a lot down here at the moment. They do want us to hold... Um, a tournament here. They, for some reason, think that if we play in Exeter, they're, they're on a beach. I'm not sure they get their geography yet. So I'm confused. Uh, so event be involved as well. Like even if you don't like football and you cannot kick a ball, 
come along for the socials that we do because it's a really, really good environment for everyone to be included and accepted. Um, we are at, say, Extra Pride, Exmouth Pride, Totnes Pride, Timmouth Pride. I think Honiton's having a Pride this year for the first time. Well, so there are lots of new prides in the pipeline um, happening and we will be there um, with all of our rainbow balls and everything as well. So um, another little plug for the football team there, obviously. Um, and then bucket.com last year as well, we entered our first major pride. Um, we got the weirdest combination ever, but worked. So Freddie Flintoff and Tate from Drag Race Series 1. Yeah, 1. Yeah. Um, they drove around Manchester and told everyone about LGBTQ Manchester and Alan Turin and what he'd done. Um, and we got to go on our first parade as a business as well. Um, but it was the, one of the best experiences that we've had because it's something they'd never done before. And it was because we basically said, you know what, we'll do it ourselves and we get things done. Um, and it was an amazing opportunity for everyone. I want to see less of this. Um, now, the other two footballers on the side here are football players that have come out eventually, but after they've retired. And I, that's still brave, and I'm not saying that's not a bad thing, but... The less we see of this, and obviously with what happened with Justin Fashion here, which is horrendous, we're going to see more of this result. So these at the moment are all people that are playing football, are in tech, are lines people that are out within the community at the moment. And these are the people that are the role models of our future and what we're going to be using to hopefully move forward. Um, the most recent one is linesman, the referee over here. So he's the first openly gay Brazilian linesman that, who came out just before Qatar and he was refereeing three games over there as well. So that is within itself how brave he was as well. Um, had all the names, but not showing at the moment. So I'm going to forget some of them. But um, this chap over here, if you don't know him, so he's the first openly gay English referee linesman as well that came out about five, six years ago. Um, obviously, most people should know Jill Scott by now anyway because of what she's achieved in the last sort of Two, two, three years winning the um, Women's European Cup and also celeb I'm a celebrity. Yeah, I didn't see. Um, so this is what will, will be the result of having a lot more. The future. So obviously, as well as PRISM, there are a lot of other tech um, groups that are out there as well that you've become part of, um, that you can reach out to, that will give you ideas of how you can get into the career, ideas of how you can move around as well. Uh, to different areas of the business. Um, but most importantly, it will give you a community that you might want to become part of. The latest one is Unicorns in Tech. Um, that's We've only literally just signed up for that one at Booking, but it's a, um, it kind of works a bit like, you know when you're like on Uber Eats or delivery and you're trying to see where the driver is? That's kind of how it works. Go onto a map and you can pinpoint where people are that identify as LGBTQ that work in tech. Um, but they, they, they won't stalk really. you're not going to rock up and die. but it doesn't mean I don't mean like that um, obviously Pride in Sport this month is also Football v Homophobia um, so there's a lot of stuff happening with that so tomorrow is Exeter City's Football v Homophobia match which will be going as a club as well um, but Pride in Sport again if there's other sports out there and obviously um, you mentioned about the rock climbing um, there's other sports within Exeter you've become part of. There's a running club, there's a swimming club, there's rock climbing, there's football, there's rugby. There's lots of sports in Exeter and Devon and the surrounding areas, but you will also find all of them on Pride Sports. And then again, these are just some of the teams that are part of the GFSN network as well. And that is it. Any questions? Or... <laughs>